So pretty exciting, my book watch, Yeah, Language is on the Move. I would love your support. If you are happy to pre-purchase my book now, you can jump on the link below in the comments here and secure yourself a copy, which will have a little message from me when it comes out to you. You'll also receive a 30-minute guided meditation for free. Thanks again, guys. Enjoy the flow. Morning, everyone. Whether or not you're watching this back, watching this on YouTube, or um, joining me live today, uh, welcome to yoga. Um, I've been playing a lot lately with twisting and just uh, balancing, twisting and balancing together. And I've been loving the feeling and sensation of being in really awkward positions because I believe at the moment in life, um, with the current situation, we are being put in all kinds of different and awkward and challenging situations. And we are being taught more and more and more to stand our ground and to remain grounded no matter how turbulent the waves. Um, and it's really, really important um, to, to actually find this solidity um, when we are feeling messy, when we are feeling like our whole world being turned upside down, when we are feeling in, unstable and insecure and unsure, I'm being forced more and more and more to surrender it up and to actually choose to get curious about what lies ahead. Why? Because we may as well. Right? None of us know what is going to happen tomorrow or next week or in four months' time. So let's get curious about what's going to happen, you know. The, um, we have a choice, you know. I was speaking to Louise Wilkinson yesterday uh, on, over on my Instagram. You might have seen it on her journey through her um, a brain aneurysm five years ago. And, she, you know, she and I are just so big on that word. We have a choice. No matter what is unfolding around us, we have a choice as to how we respond or react in our day. So yes, things are uncomfortable at the moment, but there is no need to react. There is no need to, to be constantly in a stressed state um, because we are okay. We are safe for now. We are okay. We are safe in this moment, right? That's all we need to worry about. So in this flow today, I want us to really wring out any toxicity and stress and overwhelm because it is just not needed unless we are in a life-changing or threatening situation, then that stress is absolutely not needed. So we are going to start standing today in this beautiful sequence, a twisting and balancing sequence. So I invite you to come to about the middle of your mat and we're going to just breathe in and lift up the hands and breathe out, let the arms go. Been doing this a lot lately actually breathe in and as you exhale just sort of feel yourself let go now there's a few ways you can do this you can either stay with the breath just moving through here or i've been loving fully inhale and just bending the knees and like letting it go inhale you're gonna be here for a minute so i want you to just find whatever feels good for you I, again it's really listening into your body Maybe just the standing inhales and exhales are good for you. But a beautiful opportunity to fully release any stuck tension or toxicity. Just find your own breath and keep going. Maybe five more. Inhale and exhale, hands back to the side. She is going to move through a really nice twisting arm pattern this morning. Please don't worry if you don't get this. All right, it's not about nailing it, it never is. You know, in my book, I very much talk on let's practice the art of imperfection. It feels so much better. So I'm just getting you to copy the left arm goes back, you swing around, 
meets back with the right. Right arm, oh, sorry, left arm, good. Oh, goodness, getting my lefts and rights mixed up already. Right arm goes back, swings around, meet back together. Left arm goes back, swings around, meet back together. Cool. Let's, um, we're going to be here for a minute. So it's starting to warm up the body through some twisting in the spine, the torso, a beautiful shoulder warm up. Even if your arms are just swinging here, I don't care. You remember, if we're getting frustrated, that is our choice. We can choose to laugh at ourselves and think, oh my God, what the hell is she doing here? I can't figure this out. Fantastic. The things that are tough for us are our biggest teachers. It took me weeks to get this, by the way. Weeks. So a really nice one for the knees. We've got about 30 seconds to go. These delicious twists in the torso, starting to wake up everything here, including the brain. But I bet you're not thinking about anything else. Great way to become present. Last one. Perfect. Nice. Slowly come back to stand. Beautiful. Bring the feet a little bit wider. We're going to start to move through our spine laterally. So it's like a spinal wave in a lateral direction. Nice and slow. So be a strong practice today. This is again not a beginner sequence. Um, on the page I've popped uh, two of the beginner sequences up there. There'll be another one going up there today. But if you're brand new to yoga, this probably is not the practice for you today because I'm minimal cue on the Thursdays. So plenty of other practices on the page already. Uh, if you are a little bit newer to yoga, it's like anything. We just crawl before we walk. Again, as I said, I don't cue very much in the Thursday practices so that we can really get into um, just the shapes and the flow of it. Come back to center and now move through some spinal waves. So we're just starting to focus on like a cow cat, just focusing on this beautiful, smooth spinal wave, taking our time. I do think often, sometimes we do them on our heads and knees, sometimes we do them standing, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Take your time. Use your breath. How much can you segment the spine? Reverse the direction. You might have freaked out there. Perfect. One more. Beautiful. Coming up to stand. From this position, plug down through those feet. Breathe in, sweep up the hands. And on your exhale, we're actually going to bend the knees and bring the right hand back. Inhale, come back up. Bend the knees and bring the left hand back. Doesn't matter what goes on with the knees here, it's warming up through the backs of the ankles and getting a little twist. Now, you might come onto your toes. For a little bit of extra balance. So one knee will go in front of the other one, that's totally okay. But I encourage you to come up onto the balls of your feet. Exhale to twist, inhale to come up. The depth is completely up to you. Two more, sorry, three more, my bad. Last one. Beautiful. From here, we fall forward. From here, inhale to a halfway lift. And then on your exhale, folding forward. We'll do that two more times. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, folding forward. Warming up those hamstrings. One more time. Inhale. 
and exhale. From here, we're going to step back to our hands and knees, just into some wrist mobility. Bring the knees wide, sink back to a child's pose, and inhale, round your spine, come forward. Exhale, child's pose. And inhale, rounded spine, come forward. So belly to spine. You want to really keep the sad dog through the tailbone. A couple more of these. Fingers are spread wide, arms are straight. Belly is drawing up towards your backbone, really strong here. Now again, I'm assuming that uh, if you're on this practice today, you've most definitely done yoga before or you do it often. I am assuming that your wrists are relatively quite strong, that you do wrist mobility often. Again, I bang on about it. I do it in every single class. Yoga, strength, anything you do with me will warm up your wrists quite well to start. Beautiful. Let's come back to tabletop position here, everyone. From this tabletop position, turn the fingers out to the side. And today we're going to do little circles with the, the fingers out to the side. Again, those of you who have been uh, consistent on these classes, now time to just up the, the ante just a little bit. But always listen to your body. Our wrists are exceptionally strong, but we have to practice being on them. Let's turn it around back the other way. It's like anything, it's just little bits at a time. Alrighty, we're going to come to uh, tabletop position. We're going to turn onto the backs of the hands. Now, if this is not okay for you, that's okay. Bring the hand back like this. Keep the arms nice and straight. We don't want to bend the elbows. However, if this is okay for you, we're going to put a little bit of weight into those hands and then just sink back. So we've got to keep those arms as straight as possible, holding for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, tuck the toes, sit back to your heels, give your wrists a good shake out. Now this next one we're going to do back of the hand push-ups to arm by the elbow joints. Now if you don't want to use the back of your hand, please just come down to a regular hand position. All right, again, don't force this. Um, it's super important to listen. So maybe you have a normal hand position here and you're just going to bring the forehead down to the ground. All right, so that's option number one. If not, you're going to be turning the hands inwards like this. And we're going to bring the forehead down to the ground for one push-up. We're going for 10, for two. Please come back to regular hand position if you need, for three, four. We are not here to break any wrists. It is really about listening and not uh, using our ego. It's about understanding what feels okay in our bodies. And that is the practice of yoga. Three more wherever you're at. Beautiful. Nice, solid wrist warm up there. Again, tuck those toes. Sink back over your heels and shake out. So we are also going to be incorporating um, best we can some back bends into this practice. So we're going to start off with a really nice little peace flow warm up here. So plant those hands nice and wide. And we're going to step the knees back and we're going to bend the elbows and sweep ourselves through, coming to our first cobra pose. Take a full breath in and then on your exhale, bring your hands back. Inhale, lift the chest and then exhale, stay. Inhale, maybe lift the feet and exhale, stay. Bring the hands back by the side of the body. Push back to the knees, child's pose. Breathe in. Even though this is a strong practice, the strongest thing you can do is come back to a child's pose and rest at any moment. Take one more inhale and exhale. So please remind yourself to kick back here whenever you need. Let's press into the hand, bend the elbows, slide the chest through. Inhale, cobra pose or upward facing dog. Stay for the exhale. Press back, come back through child's pose. We're just going to sweep through this now. Inhale, coming through, cobra or upward facing dog. And then exhale, back child's pose. Now, we're going to turn that child's pose to a downward facing dog if you feel ready. Inhale, sweep yourself through. Stay. And then pressing up and finding a downward facing dog. Hold here for a breath in and a breath out. Drop your knees, 
Bend the elbows, sweep yourself through on the inhale. Open the chest, cobra or up dog. And then exhale back, downward facing dog. Moving in your own pace now, dropping the knees, bending the elbows, sweep through. Inhale, cobra or up dog. And exhale down. We'll go two more. Please take your variation. No need to come onto those toes just yet. Just sweep yourself through. We might visit that in our practice. One more to go. Breathe in. And then knees wide, child's pose. Take a breath in. And a breath out. If you're feeling ready, spread those hands wide. Come up to a downward facing dog. Pedal the feet out, five breaths here. Feel free to play around with this space. So what I mean by that is bend the knees, play with uh, alternate heel lift. Feel free to drop the knees down to the ground. Feel free to reach back and catch one ankle with your opposite hand. No right or wrong. Breathe. Beautiful. From this downward facing dog, inhale, ripple through slowly high plank. So taking your time to stack your shoulders over your wrists. From here, straight away, bring that right elbow, right knee to your right elbow and straight over to the left side. I'm going to hold here for five. Hold here for four. Hold here for three. For two. And one. Sweep the right leg up behind you. Inhale. And exhale, bend the knee and open, opening that hip. Feel free to move the right hip around the joint. So I like to just do some circles or a figure of eight. No right or wrong here, just exploring and opening that hip, plugging down into both of those hands of yours. Play with different orientations of the hip circle. Then inhale, straighten the leg behind you, bring the knee to the nose as you round through the spine. Keep rounding, keep rounding, and then start to flex the foot. And we're going to step it outside the right hand, coming to our low lunge. So from here, we're going to drop that knee down, left hand down, right hand comes up. We're going to twist, getting a feel for, um, again, this twisting practice here. Just breathe into the body. Fingers on the left are spread nice and wide here. Take a full breath in and stay for your exhale. From this position, bring the right hand outside the right foot. Push through the right foot here and we find low crescent pose or low lunge. Inhale, sweep the hands up above the, the head and extend the two fingers along. The thumbs are interlaced. Take a full breath in. As we exhale, press the sternum forward and hold. Getting deep into the hip flexor of the left, you can look up or straight ahead. The weight's in my front heel. Take a full breath in. Now push through that front heel. We're going to turn and internally rotate. Bring the backs of the hands to touch. And then we're going to tuck the chin to the chest and pull the belly button to the spine. Hold. So a real angry cat here. Beautiful. From this position, slowly, let's do that one more time. Inhale. Reach those hands up. So getting that delicious stretch into the hip flexor. Exhale. Open the chest. Stay for a full breath in and then internally rotate those shoulders. Bring the hands together like a seal. Tuck the chin to the chest, round the spine like an angry cat. Beautiful. Take one more breath and then push through that heel and stretch your hamstring here for three breaths. Good. Inhale and exhale. Take one more of these. Slowly come back forward. And just starting to shorten your stance a little bit, bending that back knee, and we're going to reach behind with the right hand and catch that left foot. And again, if you need to put your hand down to do this, do so, or you can stay upright. It doesn't matter, whatever floats your boat. And just having a really nice quad stretch here and a heart opener. Take one more breath in. 
Release that back foot slowly. Keep the back toe tucked. As we start to sink back, start to flex your right foot and squeeze your right quad. So my back toe is tucked under here. And then just do your best to lift off that right foot off the ground. And we're going to hold for 10, 9, push with the heel, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Rebend that front knee. We're going to keep that knee bent. As we bring the hands to the heart, bring the left knee in to touch the back of the right knee here and hold for 10, 9, 8, Seven, curl into a little ball, six, five, four, three, two, and one. From here, extend that back leg out, bring your hands out to a beach ball, and holding onto that beach ball, we're going to keep our hips square and turn our torso to the right. So right knee is bent, back leg is behind, kicking away with the back heel. Squeeze and twist the torso here, eye gaze steady. Really make sure you have a soft knee bend in the right. So really warming up into our twisting and into our balance. We're holding for another 15. Just do your best here. Hold on to a beach ball. The hips are square. The torso is twisted. Beautiful. Take one more breath in. Bend both your knees and forward fold. Getting straight in this morning. Breathe in. Breathe out. From this position, we're going to press through those heels, rise all the way up, unravel your spine. Inhale, sweep the hands above the head. And exhale, forward fold. Hey, Harrison, hope you're well. Inhale, halfway lift. And we're stepping back to our high plank and pause. Optional chaturanga, you can always skip this. Take a full breath in. Knees or toes, exhale, shift forward, elbows wrap the side of the waist. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog, your choice. In your up dog, your gaze is always forward. We never ever look up. Pull the shoulders back and really feel your heart space press forward. From here, downward facing dog. Take a few breaths here in that downward facing dog. So pedal your feet out. Just breathe. No need to rush. From your downward facing dog, slowly we're going to inhale, ripple through high plank and bring your left knee towards your left elbow, pause. Then over to the right elbow and pause. We hold here for five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, sweep. The left leg up behind, exhale, bend and open and create some hip circles here with the left hip. So both hands are strong, arms are straight, and you're circling around that left hip to your degree. Just playing with that left hip, letting it feel good, exploring what's going on today for you that, for that left hip. Now inhale, straighten the leg. And exhale, slowly, slowly, slowly curl your spine, angry as cat ever. Don't rush this. Bring the knee in, stack your joint, shoulders over wrists, flex the left foot, step it outside your left hand and drop the right knee down. Setting up for our low lunge. So taking your time here, getting a feel for this in your body. We're working now the right hip flexor and psoas muscle, which gets super tight if you're sitting. From here, extend those hands above the head, squeeze the biceps on the ears, fingertips face up. Take a full breath in and stay for the exhale. Inhale, press the chest or the sternum forward. I like to think of my sternum pressing the wall in front of me here. Go take one more breath. Now internally rotate the shoulders like a seal, bring the backs of the hands together, tuck your chin to your chest and round your spine. Right, should feel quite an intense stretch here through that right hip flexor. Inhale, fingertips lift up, lengthen the spine, drop in. Exhale, open the hands, press the sternum forward. Take a full breath in and then exhale. Bring the backs of the hands to touch, chin to chest, round your spine, hold. Good, from here, slowly come back, 
pull through your hamstrings and we have three breaths here. And I realise I've just forgotten the twist, that's okay, I'll pop it in now. It's always funny to remember sequences in yoga, it's always a good practice of presence. From here, slowly come back forward and let's just place that right hand down. Left foot is planted and we're going to really twist open here. So bringing that left hand up to the ceiling. You can come onto those back tippy toes if you like. That's completely up to you and just feel that twist through the body. Good. Take a full breath in and stay for the exhale. All right. Keep the back toes tucked. Slowly coming back to this position. All right, we want to have those back tippy toes tucked under here and we start to flex the foot on the left, which means we have to squeeze our quad. So you're going to see the kneecap lift. So really good practice for pistol squats um, and any compression work. We're now going to lift that left heel off the ground and hold here. So whatever is going on for you here, it should be messy. Again, practice the art of imperfection here for eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, one. Place the left heel down. Keep this left knee bent. Super important. So how slowly can you step up, bring the right knee to the back of the left knee and curl into a little ball. Hold for five. Hold for four. Round the spine, belly to spine. Hold for three. Your eyes are down. Hold for two. Keep the left knee bent. Extend the right leg out behind you like a warrior three. Hold on to a beach ball and keep your hips square and turn your torso. So we're twisting here. We're holding for 30 seconds. It's a big hold. It's a big stretch for the hamstrings and a challenge on the balance. Just do your best. So the hips are dead square. You are just twisting through the torso. Steady breath. Three more breaths here. Good. Bend your knees a lot and forward fold. Let that go. Breathe in. Breathe out. Wriggle your feet hip distance apart. Come down to a seat. Now we're going to start to move and open the spine a little bit. So this might be enough for you. Just working into a squat with an arm reach. So a little bit of a twist as you do this by pushing open that knee and finding space. But for anybody who wants anything deeper into your back bending practice, as I said we're going to include a little bit of back bending practice today, what we can do is start to bring one hand behind and press up and start to open. So move through a squat behind and start to open. Don't worry if this isn't in your practice just yet. Just play with a feeling and a sensation. It's a really nice one for the spine and a beautiful way to bring your squat practice into your yoga. Again, we should be squatting like this for five minutes a day for the rest of our lives. You want a healthy spine, a five minute squat and a two minute hang every day for the rest of your life will keep your spine well. Two more. Last one. All right. From here, straight arms. You're already there, going straight into crow pose. Fingers spread nice and wide. Triceps on the inside of the knees. The knees press the triceps. Chin tucks in, press through the hand. Maybe you lift off one foot. Maybe you lift off the other and we're holding here for 10. Doesn't matter what's going on here, just give it a go. Five. Four, three, two, come back to squat. Take a full breath in. Stay for the exhale. Listen up. We're going to fall back through a rock and roll and then come into a chaturanga. So we're going to rock and roll back a couple of times. And then we cross the ankles. Tuck through, place the hands down and step jump or float back through your vinyasa. How we go? Downward facing dog. 
So I always like to include a bit of fun in my practices because that's what it is about. From this downward facing dog, you now sweep the right leg high and exhale, bend and open. From here, slowly open the right hip, bring the right leg out to the side, point the toe and squeeze the quad. Well done, inhale, sweep the leg high. Two more times like that, exhale, squeeze the right quad, bring it out to the right, squeeze your obliques. One more time, inhale. And exhale, right leg out to the side and hold. Beautiful, from here, bring the right knee over to the left tricep, twist. Extend the right leg out to the left, come into the blade edge and hold a plank pose. Shoulders over wrists. Lean into the right hand, fall and triangle, left hand lifts. Squeeze the quads. Take a breath in, and then from here, bend your left knee and sit down. Great. So we're gonna do three back bends here. Push, so the left knee is bent, right leg is straight, right hand underneath right shoulder. Inhale, lift up, and exhale, come back down. Inhale, lift up, and exhale, come back down. One more, inhale, lift up, stay, look down, place your left hand down, bring the right knee towards the right wrist and uh, right elbow and hold. Come onto your left fingertips, extend the left arm out long, hold for five, four, three, two, one, left hand down, keep the right leg up if you can. Side plank on the left. Left hand is down. If you need to put the right foot on top of the left, do so. Right arm over the top or extend it up. Hold for five, four, keep that right knee up if you can. Three, two, one. Slowly step the right foot to the front of the mat. So as I said, this is definitely not a beginner practice. Always on the Thursday mornings, they are fiery, they are slow, uh, a minimal cue. So super, super important to listen into that. So we're in a lunge. Great. From the lunge, come into the fingertips. Push down through the right heel. Great. And from this position, we're going to keep the left hand on the ground or left fingertips. Try to stand your left fingertips. Sweep the right hand up. We're going to twist. Alrighty. I want you to stay on those left fingertips or Hover those left fingertips up. Good. Can you bring your left elbow to your right knee? And then bring the hands together. We have just found a twist. Push out of your back heel. Your back leg is strong. I'm on the back tippy toes and my back quad is squeezed. Try to rotate your right shoulder open. Breathe. Your breath will get you through this, guys. From here, extend the right arm back. Fingertips to the back wall. Push through the right heel. Left hand extends out. Well done. So finding this twisted lunge here. Again, come back to your breathing. Your hips are square to the front. It is just the torso that is twisted. You know... Sometimes we don't know how long we're going to be in a, a shitty situation for. We may as well sit down and surrender to it. Come back to our breathing. Soften our shoulders. Open our hearts. Push through the right heel. Inhale. Windmill yourself up and find your way to warrior two. Make sure your right knee and right ankle is in alignment. So I see so much of this and it's because the muscles of the feet have collapsed. I have done a two hour foot health immersion on the feet. If you are interested in it, please get in touch and I'll send it to you. But it is, if your feet, your muscles and your feet have started to collapse and this happens, you're gonna end up with knee surgery. The knee is a hinge joint. A lot of the problems that we have from our hips and our knees and into our spine stem from our feet because our feet are being put in shoes. They were never ever designed for shoes. The foot was designed to be a foot. It is strong, it is robust and it's meant to be muscly. We have an arch, that's what the arch is for to support that. We start to lose the arch, everything in our whole body collapses from there. From your warrior two, push through that right heel, bring your left hand to your hip, bring your right hand down to a block 
or the floor, Ardha Chandrasana Half Moon. So I like to just keep my right knee soft, flex the back foot. So my left toes are flexed and open. So opening my left foot here. You can either choose to stay here or bring the left arm up or bend the left knee. That's what I forgot on the other side, didn't I? Our um, little quad stretch, that's okay. And you can come into Chopasana, stretching through that left quad and pulling the heart space open if you like. All right, take a, a breath in. Stay for the exhale. This is where it's going to get fun. Keep the back leg up. Bring your left hand to a block or the floor. Right hand to hip. Now from here, we twist, revolved half moon. So we open the right side of the chest to the right and maybe your right hand lifts up. Super awkward here, similar to what we did at the start. Breathe. From here, look down. Slowly push through your right foot. Bring your left knee up to your waist. Great. We twist the other direction. Right hand to left knee, left hand goes back. Super slowly rotate your torso now to the left. Pause, breathe. Feel. All right, slowly come back to center. Extend the left leg out long, just like we did before on the ground. We're coming down to the ground through a pistol squat or please put your foot on the ground if you need to. Slowly start to sit down, take your time. Use your hands, maybe catch the pistol squat at the bottom. Maybe, oh, the block's there. <laughs> maybe you don't, maybe you fall like I did. And we come all the way down into our boat pose. Point the toes and squeeze the quads. So in this long position here, if that's too much, come back to here. We hold for 10. Maybe you do some rocks for nine. Eight, seven, six, five, Four, three, two, one. Hug your knees to your chest. Draw the knees wide, happy baby. Enjoy this. So super slow practice today. Challenging, frustrating maybe. Great, sit in it, sit in every single bit. So we're coming to our bridge pose. Both feet down onto the ground. So instead of working with a few back bends today, Push through those heels and slowly lift up your hips. Think of bringing your collarbone to your chin and then interlace those hands behind you and find your way into your bridge pose. Push down with those heels, elevate the hips, squeeze the glutes, hold. Breathe in. As you exhale, slowly come down one vertebra at a time. Now that little rock and roll we did before, we're going to give that a go again. I recommend rock and rolling for about three or four times before making yourself come through for your chaturanga, your vinyasa. I like to cross my ankles when I'm ready to go. Keep going straight, jump through, lay with bent elbows, inhale, cobra or up dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Ooh, so yes, we have that on the other side. Hopefully, I remember it. See how we go. Don't think about it too much. Left leg lifts, breathe in. Now try to keep the legs straight, point the toe, squeeze the quad, bring it out to the left, hip opener. And working the core, inhale, sweep up. Exhale, out to the sides, and inhale, lifting up, last time through, exhale, out to the side, pause here, bring the left knee to the right elbow, pause, thread the left foot out to the right, pause, we're in a plank position, 
Press down through the left hand. Squeeze both your quads, full and triangle. Right hand touches ceiling, lift up your hips. From here, slowly bend the right knee and sit down. Left, left leg is straight. Because oh, I'm sweating. We are, I have the right knee bent in this position. Well, we're going to do three back bends here. Make sure your left fingertips are facing forward. So it's an external shoulder rotation on the left. Push through the right heel. Inhale, open. Maybe come onto the right toes. Exhale, come back down. Two more. Inhale. Exhale. Now this transition is super slow. Have fun with it. All right, we're going to inhale, come up. As you exhale, look down. From here, slowly bring the right, left elbow to, left knee to your left elbow. Extend the right hand long. Beautiful, hold. Bring the right hand down, side plank on the right. Now keep that right, uh, left knee up if you can. Left hand lifts, breathe here. How slowly can you step your left foot to the front of the mat? There is no rush. Whew. And you'll find yourself into a runner's lunge. So fingertips for now, breathe. Squeeze the shit out of your back leg. Like literally lift the kneecap up and feel the quad engage. Start to peel the left hand open. You might need to go wider with your back foot so that the right hand can lift off. Hold. Breathe. Bring the right elbow to the left knee. Bring the hands together. Keep squeezing that back leg. So push out of that back heel, turn. Twist, look over your left shoulder, hold. As you're doing so well, this is a strong practice today. All right, left hand extends back. Slowly bring the torso up, hips face forward, right arm extends out in front. Look to your back fingers, hold. We're here for a little while, so breathe, be in it. Push down through your left heel, not your left toes. Can you soften your face, you know, to allow ourselves to just be in it no matter what the moment is, we get to have this moment. Let's have gratitude for it. Yes, it's uncomfortable. Perfect. Do your best to stay in it. This too shall pass. Push through the left heel, windmill the arms up. Oh, warrior two. Wow. Soft knee bend into that front leg and then engage the back leg. So I'm pressing through that blade edge, left knee, left ankle alignment. Just breathe. You know, Alan Cohen says in his book, A Course in Miracles, sometimes you can change the environment, but always you can change your mind. It's up to us how we choose to see it. Yeah, the moment is difficult. Yeah, the moment is challenging. Yeah, the moment is uncomfortable. It's painful. It's, it's sad. It's uh, discomfort. But we can still choose to soften in the moment, to soften our face, to, to let our nervous system stay regulated. That choice is completely on us. It is only 1% of the time where we are going to be in danger. So choose to look after your health by choosing to respond, not react. From this position, inhale, flip and reverse. Bend more into that left knee. We're coming down for half moon. So left hand to a block or the floor, your choice. We've got a while, don't rush it. So setting it up, soft knee bend into the left. And then maybe the right hand lifts. But if you're feeling like the hip opener, bend your right knee and catch the, uh, the edge of the foot, or not. <laughs> and always knowing that one side is always so much different to, to another. So if you fall, laugh at yourself, let it be what it is. Wherever you are, take one more breath. Now we keep the right leg up. 
we square off the hips and I like to use a block. Bring the fingertips, right fingertips to a block, left hand to hip. So setting up our revolved half moon, super challenging shape. Either stay here or peel the left side of the chest open. So similar to that standing balance we did right at the start, hold. Guys, we're nearly there. Breathe in, breathe out, look down, push through the left heel, bring the right knee up to your waist, hold, bring the left hand to the right knee, hips are square, peel the right side of the chest open, look towards your right fingertips. This twist feels amazing, breathe here. Slowly come back to centre. We have a pistol squat on the left or a regular squat down to our full hollow body. Take your time. Maybe you catch the foot, maybe you catch the pistol squat. If you do, hold it for a moment or two and then come all the way down, extend those legs out long. Hollow body hold or maybe you rock it for 10, 9, maybe go full variation, 8, hands behind, 7, 6, Belly to spine, five, four, three, two, and one. This time, rock yourself all out to seated. Bring the soles of the feet together. Breathe in. Breathe out. Good job. Alrighty, so we have one more back bend. But before we do our back bend, just a little bit of compression work. So we're going to extend, we're only going to do one round of this today. Send the feet out long, point the toes, squeeze the quads, come onto the fingertips, tuck your belly to your spine like somebody's about to punch in the stomach. And then from here we lift for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, do your best to your floor. I know they're awkward, 3, 2, that's what we're going to do one more round. And one, but this time it's into a straddle. So bring the legs out wide. Do your best here. Don't think about it. Tailbone tucks under, belly to spine, fingertips. And we lift for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, I know, 1, butterfly. Oh, they do not get any easier but chase the discomfort every day. That is the only place where you will grow. So we have one more back bend before we come down to our twist and shavasana. Now, maybe you would, I'm just gonna bring the mat a little bit back so I've got something to put my hands on. If you would like to come into wheel, so long as this, I, I really don't recommend coming into wheel if you have not done this before. Um, I'll be doing some wheel tutorials on my YouTube very shortly. So please come into bridge what we did before. If you are coming into wheel pose, I'm going to turn my nap this way. I do not want to slip on the carpet. Then you're welcome to your wheel, but if not, again, please come into bridge. We're going to try our best to hold for about 10 seconds or so. So if you're finding your bridge pose, you'll be starting from here. Those of you coming to wheel, you turn your fingertips back to face your shoulders. Again, please don't do wheel if this is your first time. Wait for the tutorials. Coming into your back bend, whatever that is for you. All right, and we're holding for about 10 seconds here. You're in wheel, press the sternum forward. When you're ready, slowly come down, tuck your chin to your chest. Peel the spine down. Just take a moment here to knock your knees together. TP pose, place one hand on the heart, one hand on the belly, notice your breath.
We're going to keep the feet hip distance apart. Take a very simple twist, arms out to a T. Drop your knees over to the left, turn your head either to neutral or to the right. I want you to take five breaths here. Take one more breath in and one more breath out. Bring your knees back up to the center, keep the feet hip distance apart and let your knees now fall to the right. You know, the Dalai Lama says on change, the acceptance of change can be an important factor in reducing a large measure of our self-created suffering. So often, for instance, we cause our own suffering for refusing to relinquish the past. If we define our self-image in terms of what we used to look like or in terms of what we used to be able to share but can't do now, it's a pretty safe bet that we won't grow happier as we grow older. Take one more breath in. Slowly bring your knees back to the centre. Give yourself a really nice hug here for five breaths. Sometimes, the more we try to hold on, the more grotesque and distorted life becomes. While the acceptance of the inevitability of change as a general principle can help us cope with many problems, taking a more active role by specifically learning about normal life changes can prevent any amount of the day-to-day -day anxiety that is the cause of many of our troubles. Extend your feet out long. Go and skip this bit. Let your palms open up and your hands by your hips. Your shoulders are away from your ears. Your feet are gently flopping open. Relax every single muscle in your body. Let the skin on your face be soft. Notice the weight of your bones. Take a full breath in here as you fill up with expansion, curiosity and presence. And as you exhale, slowly melt yourself down into this next couple of moments. In a world where we are constantly doing Take this time just to be, be here now. If you have the time, stay, stay a little longer. Maybe even set yourself a timer for five minutes and just be. If you're revisiting your day, I invite you to wriggle your toes. 
I invite you to start to squeeze the muscles in your legs. So focus on flexing your feet, squeeze the quads. And then from here, squeeze your glutes, squeeze your tummy, squeeze your hands and then your shoulders and then your face and then let it all go. Reach the hands behind you on a big full body stretch and just roll to your favorite side. Take a moment here to pause. Pay your thoughts and your attention to something you're grateful for. You know, just the simplicity of getting to have today. To be able to actually watch yoga on a screen and have two feet and a heartbeat and a breath. Like we don't know if we're going to have that tomorrow. So say thank you to that. Really live today like it was your last. And I really mean that. Slowly come up to seated. And just close down your eyes. You know, Mark Twain said, 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things that you didn't do rather than the things you did. So throw off the bow lines. Catch the trade winds in your sails. Explore, dream, and discover. Our time is now. Stop waiting for something to happen. Stop waiting for in four weeks' time, in six months' time, when I look like this, when I have this, when I earn this much, it's now. Go and live today. Gently bring your hands to your mouth as you pay attention to the words you speak, for they become the house you live in. Drop them to your heart space as you always come back to listening to this intuition and guidance that comes from your heart. And lastly, to your third eye, as you honour yourself, for we can never, ever pour from an empty cup. From my heart to yours, namaste. Have the best day wherever you were watching this. Thank you so much. Leave me a comment to let me know how you found that practice. It was challenging. Thursdays are a challenging practice for myself included. But it's never ever about what we can't do. It's about giving things a shot and appreciating it for what it is. Um, you know, as I've been really focusing on this week, um, it's very important to understand that in a world where we have been, we have been taught to perfect or look a certain way or to, to try to, you know, achieve and to get validated by others. That all comes from ourselves. So let's practice the art of imperfection this week. It is so much easier and it helps you create space and when we have space in the body and mind we make good choices good decisions and we feel confident in ourselves as we are have yourselves the most amazing day everyone thank you again for your support oh two if i on my facebook page i have now popped up um a gofundme page for a pre-release of my book so my book will be released in three months time the publishing process however is not cheap um there's so much editing and graphic design and everything that's involved with it. It's like thousands and thousands of dollars. So I've offered and asked for help within a, um, a pre-release of my book. So you can go online and donate to pre-purchase my book, Watch Your Language, and you'll receive, um, of course, as a thank you, a 30-minute guided meditation on acceptance and compassion. And when the book comes out in that three months, then, of course, you'll get your copy of Watch Your Language, a personal note for myself as well. So if you feel inclined to do that, the link is on all my pages and on my Instagram as well. Thank you so much, everyone. I hope you have a great day.